Life at Conception In a day when people are taught that the unborn are not living beings, we must do what we can to expose this terrible deception with biblical truth. Here's Jean. This principle comes from two very dynamic pregnancies. And here they are. Elizabeth got pregnant with John the Baptist when she was beyond the age of childbearing. But it was natural. Mary got pregnant because of the Holy Spirit, apart from a relationship with a man, which was supernatural. This is just a powerful illustration, I believe, of life in the womb, what we're going to read. Life that begins at conception. What happened was that right after Mary conceived, which was about six months later, after the angel appeared to her, she went to see Elizabeth. Now, that was quite a trip. It was about a five-day trip from this little suburban area outside of Jerusalem where Zachariah and Elizabeth lived, where John the Baptist was born, and she's going to go all the way to Nazareth, and that's where Mary lived. And it's about, oh, 60, 70 miles, five-day journey, just pregnant. Uh, God must have <laughs> really sustained her as she made, made that trip, probably riding on a donkey, which later is going to be reversed in a very unique way, leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ. So here, basically, what happened in the story as she comes on the scene, uh, that is, as Mary comes on the scene there in Nazareth. We read about it. I call it miraculous communication. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped inside her. Now, the word baby in the Greek text basically was a word that was used from life at conception right on through childbirth and on in to later years as an infant. So that's significant. The baby leaped inside her. That baby was John. The baby leaped inside her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now keep in mind, she's still in her fifth month. This is a baby. Can you think of the babies that are aborted in the fifth month? Even today, in ways that are unbelievable. Then she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and your child will be blessed. Your baby will be blessed. Who's that? Jesus. But he's only not too many days old in the womb. And John the Baptist and Jesus are communicating with each other in this situation. How could this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord, not the mother of a fetus that doesn't have life, already Jesus is Lord in that womb, which is miraculous that there was communication between just a conceived fetus and John the Baptist, who's five months along. How could this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For you see, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped for joy inside me. John the Baptist recognized Jesus. Now to me, that's incredible. Now to show you how the word baby is used, let me give you another illustration in Luke 2. And this is after Jesus was born. When the angels had left them, that is the shepherds, and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby, the very same word that was used of Jesus when he was just a few days old in the womb, and of John the Baptist when he was in his fifth month. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Now to me, it's rather clear from Scripture that life begins at conception.
There are other scriptures we could refer to, which we want to do right now in terms of the reflection and response question. In what ways do David's reflections regarding his prenatal experience support the fact that life begins at conception? This is King, J uh, King David reflecting back on his conception. And here's what he writes in Psalm 139. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Who did God knit together? David said, me. Me. A human being. In my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous. And I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret. When I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. When I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. To me, that's David's testimony to his prenatal experience as a human being. I believe from conception. Now, we know that um, not only do we have Scripture, and we could refer to other Scriptures, but science is demonstrating more and more that life begins at conception. They're putting cameras in the womb right after conception or at the point of conception to follow the development of that newborn, that fetus. And it's just remarkable what we can see happening there. I remember when our daughter Robin was uh, pregnant with her second little girl, Michelle. And only um, 11 weeks, actually about 12 weeks. And I spoke on abortion. And I had access to the sonogram of little Michelle. And I remember that uh, we showed that sonogram publicly right on the big screen. And remember, David, we turned up the, the sound so you could hear that heartbeat which filled the whole worship center. You could hear that. And you could see little Michelle doing acrobatic turns within the womb. It was unbelievable. But sitting in that audience was a woman who loved me, but she didn't agree with me. In fact, someone called her and said, you know, Jean is going to be speaking on abortion, and you better not come because you just get mad. She said, I'm a big girl. I can handle that. And I remember seeing her sitting there. And I didn't know what was going on in her mind, but she was watching this and listening and of course I had laid the groundwork with biblical message as well and after that service was over she went out to lunch with her family and she said to them I have to make a confession I was wrong there's life in the womb abortion is wrong it's murder and I remember her talking to me. She said, I couldn't believe to see that little baby doing those flip-flops and the sound of the heart. And at that moment, her whole mind was changed in relationship to the fact that life begins at conception. The other fascinating thing was her son, who was in high school, was sitting there at the dinner table when they were eating in the restaurant. And she made that confession. And her son said, Mom, that's what we've been trying to tell you. It's an amazing story. And it illustrates this principle, I think, beautifully. In a day when people are taught that the unborn are not living beings, we must do what we can to expose this terrible deception with biblical truth.